Hey there, just wanted to hop on and share some of my family's personal favorites. The first one we have is a baby toddler book. This has nice, chunky, thick, sturdy board book pages with little interactive and movable parts. So if you have a little one that you're just starting to introduce to books, or you have a wiggly kiddo that can't really hold still for long stories, this is perfect for them. There's lots of fun um, little peekaboos, which all three of my kids really love. There's fun finger trails and little interactive elements on each page that they can be in charge of moving as you're sitting and reading maybe you make up your own storyline to that as you read um the next one that's really fun is the animal magic series we also have holiday magic these have little windows with venetian shutters so as you open and close the pages it will change the characters on each page it does have a little bit of a storyline um, that introduces you to basic facts about the animals um, and so you see that animal on the window and then as you open the little or as you turn the page it will change the little shutters and the animal on each page how cool is that um, the next one I grabbed for you is the Muddle and Match series. This is one that's been around for a while, but we really, really love this series. It's a very durable, sturdy board book page, and it has these little characters that are divided in three sections. So um, your kiddos can be in charge of muddling up and mixing up those characters. Um, the, the first page, if it matches the same character, it's going to kind of start with all the same letters. So Marvin the Magnificent Monster makes the mighty milkshake for his massive mates at the Moonlight Mega Monster Mansion. But as they start mixing up the little characters' bodies, um, it kind of changes the story even more crazy. So Barry the Brave Batty Beast carries chocolate cupcakes to the center of the city at the Moonlight Mega Monster Mansion. So that's really fun and they can kind of mix up all different ways until you are just in love and having so much fun with all those crazy stories. The next one that we really love are the Don't Tickle books. So we have a lot of texture books, so that's not my series. It's just real thick board book pages with textures, which we love all of those. Um, it has that repetitive text. This is kind of a step up from that. You got <clears throat> your board books, but you also have fun textures. So as you feel these textures and as you tickle, each of the animals, it makes the corresponding animal noises. It has a small little, quick little storyline for them, but it has those fun sensory textures. Um, and then at the end, it'll kind of put all the crazy noises together. And it has a little dance party at the end. How fun is that? So we love that. There's a switch on the back, just in case you want to switch that off and just let them explore the textures. Um, the next one that we is an all-time favorite for my family and all of my friends and customers that have been around with me for a while is All Better. All Better has these reusable sticker band-aids. So in this book, the little animals get boo-boos. Um, and you ha it's your kiddo's job to clean it, kiss it, and put a band-aid on it to make it all better. Monkey was swinging too hard and he bumped his head. Ouch. Clean it, kiss it. Put a band-aid on it. All better. And so the kids just love the band-aids. If you love this series, we have several others. We have one with glasses because the little bear can't see very good. So all his little friends are sharing their glasses. We have a toothbrush for brushing your teeth. There's kisses, cuddles, and goodnight that has little stuffed animals. It helps them to wind down for bedtime. We have a Christmas one. We have one with hats and cast. And we have a new sports themed one as well. Another one, if you have a toddler that is learning colors, or if you have a kiddo just preparing for preschool, I would highly recommend this book. It's one of my favorites. Um, this is the big book of colors. So it starts here with a color wheel. So you can learn about all the different colors. Um, but each page is centered around a different color. So not only are you learning colors, you're also helping them to expand and build their vocabulary. Like maybe they don't know what this is and these are blueberries and you can explain that to them or blue jeans or denim, you know, and so you can kind of expand their vocabulary. You can teach them the colors. You can point out objects or it could be like a search and find, like where's the green frog? And there's the green frog right there. Or how many asparagus are there? One, two, three. And so I just love this book for all different reasons, um, but utilize it not just for the colors, utilize it for all the other amazing features in it. Here in the back, there's a little clear page and you can use it to show how to mix colors. So when you add pink and blue, it makes purple and yellow and blue makes green. So kind of introduces them to mixing those colors. 
The next one that my son, all my son's all time favorite as he was growing up is Lift the Flat Numbers. So I would say about a year supervised on up. He had really, really loved this book. We use this book in the same way as the other one where not only just for the numbers, um, we used it for counting. We used it for learning animals. We learned it, used it for search and finds. Um, this book has little flaps in it, so initially you got to teach them to be soft and close the flaps before they flip the page, um, but it's going to be one of their favorites. Um, again, it has thick, durable pages, so our flaps are not glued on with the seam. They're actually two or three different cardstock pages glued together with the flap cut out, which makes them extra sturdy and durable. Um, and just so you know, all of our books have a lifetime replacement for half price. Should you ever need it for any reason, maybe they just love it for five years and you want a new copy, the dog eats it, they drop it in the toilet, they spill some milk on it, they chew it up if they're a newborn baby. <laughs> any reason, they can get it replaced for half price. The next one I have here is an activity book. This is 50 Science Things to Do and Make. If 50 is not enough, we have 365 science activities. I love this book because there are simple projects that you can do with things that you already have around the house, like tape, toothpicks, maybe some marshmallows, some glue, a fork, um, a balloon, straws, um, and they are just so many activities just to keep them busy. So if you're looking for a fun summer activity or winter activity, that would be great. That will keep them busy for hours, especially that 365 science things to do and make. The next one that we really love are the magic painting books. So these are a mess free activity. You just need a little bit of water and a paintbrush. And I gotta find you a page that hasn't been done as much. My son loves these. Um, so they look like a black and white page. You just dip that paintbrush in water. And then as you start coloring on the pages, the magic colors are revealed. Um, so you could just give them a tiny little water. They're, if they spill it, it's just a little bit of water. It's not a big messy paint. It's getting all over your table and your chairs. Um, another thing I recommend is on like Amazon or Target. I'm sure you can find those little water pens that you fill the base with water. Screw the cap on. It has a little paintbrush tip just like this. And you don't have the spilled water. Um, and you can just tear it when you get out of time. There's lots and lots of pages for them to color. Or there is a little protector here that you can kind of tuck from the back behind the page that you're working on and then can go to town and that won't bleed through onto the next page. The next one that we really love are um, Beast Feast, Dragon Post, Poppy Pickle, Nibbles, Nibbles the Dinosaur Guide, Nibbles Bedtime. Emmy Yarla is amazing. She writes her stories and she also illustrates the stories. She has a lot of fun, like quirky things you can read all over the book. And there are little elements in here that you can kind of open up and read and interact with little flaps and things. Um, and so this beast finds this boy, he names him dinner, he plans to eat him for a beast feast and he starts writing all his monster requests and they write back with their special requests. Like they want him more plump, ew eating these eyeball hairy little spider meatballs. Little boy's like, no, let's go, let's go have some chocolate cake. So they go and do that. And then as the story goes along, more salty, nope, let's go swimming in the ocean. And they become best friends. And Beast is like, I don't want to eat him anymore for dinner. Let's come up with a different plan to satisfy the Beast's needs and stay best friends forever. Such a cute story. Um, the next one I have is called a Shine a Light book. We have lots of Shine a Light books. They're nonfiction books. Um, and your kiddos get to use a flashlight while they read, which makes it extra fun. Um, it's also proven that when your kiddos are doing something, as they're interacting, maybe eating a snack or playing with Legos or playing with their toys while they're being read to or interacting with a flashlight, they're going to be able to retain and absorb that information a lot better. So you're reading the story and you're looking at this page and it says a new person is waiting to be born. Can you see her? And then when you shine your flashlight behind the page, you can see that little baby in the mom's tummy. How cool is that? Or the little bones in the kids' bodies. See their little skeletons. Isn't that super neat? So you just, every single page has something hiding and it's revealed when you shine that flashlight behind the page. Got her little lungs there. And then when you flip that page over, you're learning a little bit more about what you saw shining through. Um, another book that my son really loves is the uh, Things to Spot. We have individual books like Things to Spot in Fairyland or Pirates. Um, but this is the big ultimate big book, Things to Spot. So it has multiple different genres like farms or oceans. 
and every page has certain items that they have to kind of search out and find. And this again will keep them very busy. I did the pirate one with my son and I, I found myself searching and searching for several minutes at a time trying to find all of the little items that were hiding. Um, another of our all time favorites are the lift the flap books. So we have lift the flap books from baby toddler on up to, you know, 10, 14 and above. I love them as an adult. So I feel like there's no age cap on that. Again, utilize them for each stage of learning. So if you have a baby or toddler right now, grab those flat books and help them to start to build their vocabulary. Point out objects, have them search for things, count things. What color is that um, bug, you know? And so utilize it for all different things, not just for that specific age, because um, they can be used for a long period of time. My son really started loving this Lift the Flap questions and answer series from about one years old. He's now eight and a half and he still really loves them. And my two-year-old twins are very into the flap books as well. Um, so this is the Lift the Flap questions and answers about nature. Look how cool that is. Every single flap will have a question. And then when you open it up, it has the answer to that question. Like, where do butterflies lay their eggs? On or near the plants their babies will eat, want to eat when they hatch. Butterflies' eggs hatch into little hungry caterpillars. Isn't that cool? So all of these diff different flaps all over the place. Again, it's um, using their fine motor skills. Sometimes they're critical thinking if you're asking them questions. Um, but more importantly, it helps to focus them in on what you're reading. My son was very busy. He would never sit still. Um, but when we did the flaps, he had something to fiddle with and play with. And he was sitting there while I was reading those flaps. And so that was the one reason I really loved them because he was so busy and wouldn't want to sit still for story time. But when we opened the flap books, it really helped him to hone in and to tune in and really focus on what was being said. Another flap book is Let the Flap Bugs and Butterflies. So this one's of course all about bugs and butterflies. There's lots and lots of flaps hiding all about the bees and the butterflies. Um, there's some watery bugs as well here. And then we have bugs in the undergrowth, bugs that come out when it's dark, um, bug homes, and then bug facts. So that's a good one. We have some about the microscope, about germs, um, about um, creatures that live deep, deep down in the ocean, which is super cool because those are a lot of creatures that we maybe have never heard of. Um, so check out all the lift the flaps. You can't go wrong with any of them. Another of my favorites um, that may be lesser known is the My First Encyclopedia. So when I first started, they had each of these different stories in an individual book. Um, so for example, um, our world, space, science, my body, animals, dinosaurs. And so each of these um, would be in a different book version, but now it's in a compi compiled combined volume. I really, really love the illustrations in here. Like it talks about our world, talks about dusty deserts, changing of seasons, steamy rainforests, frozen poles. And so it has lots of cool pictures and it breaks down all of these little um, facts and information into little bite-sized chunks that are easy for them to absorb and to retain, but it kind of um, introduces them into different topics and the, the illustrations really help to grab their attention. So the My First Encyclopedia is amazing. And then lastly, I just wanted to introduce you to a few of my family's favorite chapter books. Um, the first one is by one of my favorite authors, Sally Rippin, which you'll hear about another of hers in just a moment. Um, but this is The School of Monsters, and each of these books is centered around a different monster that goes to the school. These are introductory um, chapter books. So if your little one's just now learning to read and sounding out words, this is the series for them. You can buy the whole box set, you can buy them individually. Um, and in these books, they are a dual reader. So each page has really bright, colorful, fun illustrations by um, Chris Kenneth, which I met him and both Sally Rippin at one of our book conventions. Um, so the parents would read the black text and the kiddos would read the colored text. Um, and so you're going through and you're looking at the fun pictures and reading the stories. And then when you get to the red word, the kiddos get to sound that out. In the back of each book, there's also a page that they can go back and practice each of the words that they learn throughout the story. Um, it also has a little parent help guide, how to use this book and to get the most out of it. And then it also has step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw each monster 
from each book. So there are a lot of um, books in this series and there's a few more coming out soon. Um, Sally Rippon also writes um, a little vehicle book, uh, Wills and Springs and Moving Things. So it's kind of based on the parents of each monster and the jobs that they do like firefighter or farmer, um, garbage collector. And so you can go through and build vocabulary and learn about different vehicles in that one. Um, the next one is our favorite is Billy and the Mini Monsters. So this little boy, Billy, gets a dresser from a consignment store. He gets a little freaked out. He thinks he sees these monsters in his room. And he does. He actually, they're actually goofy, silly, mischievous monsters. So this is written kind of like a comic book style, but it also has full pages of text. Every single page is color illustration, so that really helps to keep them engaged and grab their attention. Silly, su super silly and goofy. Um, these monsters sneak into his backpack and go to the museum or go to the field trip. They often get lost or get into mischief and Billy's got to go bail them out. This little guy, Trumpet, he loves cheese and he often stink, uh, toots, he often toots stinky farts. Um, so if you don't like the part, you wear it shy away, but all kids think this is hilarious and you will want every single one from this series. The next one, and lastly, is by Sally Rippin again. Um, she writes this story about a young witch who's not so great at magic. Her best friend, Buster, is a feelings monster who, when he's happy, becomes very colorful and light and floats away. But when he's sad, he shrinks down and becomes heavy and dull. Witches and monsters are rivals. They're not supposed to be best friends, but Buster and Polly have always been best friends and they're not going to deny that friendship. Um, it talks about some of the obstacles and challenges that they both face individually, but they always find a way to face that together. And she's also on a little bit uh, of a quest to find out more about her dad who had passed away. This book is silly, it's uh, suspenseful, it's a tearjerker. I found myself not being able to put it down. I started reading as a read aloud to my son when he was two. Of course, he's way too young for this series, but it was something for him to bond with me as he was um, drinking his bottle, just hearing my voice, being able to have me hold him and read to him and hear, and just having that moment to hear the language of this book will also help expand their vocabulary. But I found myself reading and reading. I would come out like half an hour later, my husband's like, what, did you fall asleep in there? I was like, no, I just could not put this down. Such a great series. Whether you have a younger, even a baby, that you just want to read aloud to them, or you have an independent reader, get this series. There's three books in the series and I cannot recommend it enough. I loved it. It's one of my favorites. Um, but hope you enjoy that. Um, let me know in the comments if you want a closer look at anything or if you need any personal book recommendations. I would love to help you, but enjoy and I hope you guys have a great night. Bye-bye.